everyone, Lone Wolf here. Welcome to the show. In today's video, I'd like to talk about nightclubs, what they mean in a contemporary sense, and why you should avoid them like the plague. This topic was inspired by videos from Sandman and Aaron Clary. Links in the description. Despite the ongoing global situation, it's likely that things will eventually normalise in the future, so it's good to take stock at the present moment and reframe your priorities. This is all just opinion, of course. There might be some philosophical differences, especially from dudes that really like the scene or are successful within it. Let's be clear about this, though. Nightclubs are at their base level. Let's be clear about this, though. Nightclubs at their base level are cancerous, toxic, and dystopian places. They are kryptonite to human beings in general, but especially to the modern man. They are dank, dingy, smelly cesspools of promiscuity and unrestrained arrogance designed to lure in unwitting individuals with promises of women, endless fun into the early hours. What they actually deliver, for the most part, is anger and frustration. Their entire business model is based around getting hot girls in, because then that draws in the men. It's a rigged game, folks. Turkey's voting for Christmas. Most of the women that attend the nightclub are there for free drinks and free food, with no intention of getting picked up. It's so loud in the place that you can't demonstrate any level of personality, charisma or charm in the verbal sense. Before my awakening and going my own way, I would often go out with friends to such places, even as recently as my university studies, in fact. Before my awakening and going my own way, I would often go out with friends to such places, even during my university studies, in fact, before I realised the truth. Several times earlier in my life, I followed the same tragic, deluded MO, and it goes something like this. I would head out a few days before to buy overpriced clothes, because one has to look good for a Saturday night. I'd get all smartened up and clean-shaven, paying the same attention to detail as if I was going for a job interview. Then I'd meet up with the guys, would go out for pre-drinks in a pub, subsequently heading on to a nightclub or three. The first thing that hits you is the price of entry. £10 for a lower-level place. But it can be shockingly expensive to get into places in big cities like Liverpool, Birmingham and London. Let's remember that these tolls are just to walk through the door. Moreover, you have the 6 foot 8 inch doorman, bouncers on the door, checking you for knives and other stabbing implements. I don't like being treated like a criminal, especially when you get inside the club the real criminal activity is taking place, whether that's harassment, drugs or violence. Now you're inside the club, the first order of business is to get a drink. So, you head over to the bar and realise that there's a mass of people surrounding it, three bar staff running around like headless chickens, unable to hear a word of what the customers are saying to them over the noise. You queue up with the others and maybe, just maybe, get served after about 25 minutes. The wallet takes a big hit, seeing as you'll pay upwards of £3.50 for a drink, be it an Alcapop or a buttery pint of lager. They don't clean the pipes out so much at these places. I know people that have worked in breweries and I've seen the scale of this business. Alcapops are produced on a monumental scale, monumental, literally hundreds of thousands if not millions of 275 mil bottles per run. When you see the sheer scale of this, the price of manufacture is negligible almost, and the markup in the club is insane. The guys at the top are making boatloads of cash at your, and previously my, expense. Now at this point in my life it didn't matter that I hated the music, the scene, and the other guys in the club for the most part. The only thing that mattered was the girls, and even though I probably wouldn't have had much in common with them. I knew the most attractive girls to me at the time resided in the nightclubs. Again, this was before my decision to go my own way, about 10 years ago at the age of 21 or so. How then was I going to start talking to one of these girls, and was I ever successful in wooing one? Well, prior to this point, I wouldn't even approach a girl, let alone talk, but at this point... Well, prior to this point, I wouldn't even approach a girl, let alone talk. But in those days, I would pluck up the courage to utter the simpy line, can I buy you a drink? I think all of you guys out there just collectively shook your heads. I mean, I may as well have just given them the money. On more than one occasion, I bought girls drinks and didn't even get a lasting conversation, let alone anything else. Indeed, nothing at the end of the night became a recurring and consistent theme throughout this early... Er er Indeed, nothing at the end of the night became a recurring and consistent theme throughout this period of my life. All these drinks you'll be slamming down for want of nothing better to do will cost a lot of money, but more urgently than that, you'll start to need the toilet. 
Unfortunately, what constitutes a toilet in these places is insulting to almost any other lavatory in this civilized world. Where else can you queue up? Yes, queue. To get to a urinal that's full of bottles and chewing gum, standing shoulder to shoulder in urine with drunken fools. Oh, and on the way out, a random guy stood there trying to sell you fragrance. What a life he has. I remember going up to one girl who was in her late teens, early twenties. She was the archetype of my ideal woman with regards to appearance. She had long brown hair, pretty features, great body, and was probably an 8.5 to 9 out of 10 by my reckoning. I went up to her and said my line, can I get you a drink? She replied with some degree of disdain, I've got a boyfriend, and her face was like thunder. I sauntered off, unruffled, because looking back, I was already beginning to cultivate an attitude I sauntered off, unruffled, because looking back I was already beginning to cultivate an attitude of indifference. For the rest of the night I noticed her, and not once did I see her with a boyfriend of any description. In fact, I saw her grinding up against a number of other guys. Firstly, this scuzzy behaviour set off alarm bells in my head. It helped me learn the reality of things, and I'm thankful for the experience. The purpose of nightclubs is not to get laid or find a girlfriend. Not even remotely. They are designed to cause frustration. They're designed for women, not men. The men that are successful in nightclubs are elite, the highest tier, and have a combination of either looks or money. I've even known of DJs that work in these places and have very little success with women. Another time, close to the end of my affiliation with nightclubs, I was out with some university classmates. We were in a basement club and it was all smoky and I was scouting for people to go and talk to. There was a girl in red that was clearly the hottest in the club, maybe even the city, I don't know. Solid 9.5, but she knew it. She must have gone out a few times because I could have sworn I'd seen her before. I tried it on without fear and obviously got blown back, and she did this to about 15 guys. It wouldn't surprise me if she'd had a boyfriend the whole time who wasn't there with her. It was all just ego boosting to confirm to herself how desirable she was, and this is common, I fear, in many women in this day and age. The level of arrogance was off the chart. Later, I saw a gap on the end of the bar and waited to get a drink. She sauntered over and squeezes between me and the next guy, when clearly there wasn't room, thinking she should get priority purely by virtue of her looks, and she did. This really annoyed me, but I couldn't really do anything about it. The place would have been full of losers and white knights, not least the bouncers, but nevertheless it provided further impetus for me to abandon nightclubs for the rest of my life. It was a real learning experience with respect to gender dynamics, and I'm thankful it happened at an early age. In the marketing material for these clubs, i.e. the Facebook photos that go up on the morning after, the majority of people in them are hot girls, which may be the odd. In the marketing material for these clubs, for example the Facebook photos that go up the morning after, the majority of people in them are hot girls, with maybe the odd random dude trying to sneak in. It's weird because looking at them I'd be thinking, I don't remember her. If she was that hot I would have seen her, surely. In fact, I don't remember there being this many hot girls in the club last night. It's purely an advertising gimmick to draw more guys in, of that I can be certain. The constant rejection sends a false message to men that you are worthless and have nothing to offer. After several instances of this, I realised about a decade ago, when I was out with two close friends visiting me at university, that I would never consciously go to a nightclub ever again. Both of my friends were getting it on with these two girls, they weren't particularly good looking, and they were part of a group of three. We were a group of three too, but sadly the last girl in their group was very unattractive and didn't want to engage in conversation at any rate. Now I know that I'm not an ugly guy for sure, I've been told that I'm a seven. I train, lift, eat well, make an effort when I go out and take pride in myself, even if the music scene isn't really my bag in these places. I decided to make a journey onto the dance floor, never mind that I can't dance and I hate it. I'd had a fair bit to drink and didn't really care. I tried dancing and talking to a few eights and nines, but they weren't interested in the slightest. All of this builds frustration, as Louis Marco has stressed before on his channel. Enough frustration that for most of the rest of the evening I kept putting money into the punch bag machine and tried to beat the high score, with encouragement from another drunken stranger next to me, who was probably the most fun person in the club. My friends were like, where did you go? And I simply said that this is the last time I spend any money on one of these places again, let me tell you. And I've followed this mantra ever since. After leaving the nightclub, you tend to finish the evening with a tray of mutated meat and grease, which may or may not be spewed up into the toilet, and go to sleep with the room spinning and your ears ringing, with a bonus sore throat. This is called a good night. Then you wake up in the morning with a splitting headache, sick to your stomach, and with a considerably lighter wallet. 
If it's especially bad, then the following day is a write-off. You can't do anything for hours and feel like complete garbage. Your productivity is through the floor. I now stick to live music shows more closely linked to my musical tastes, and if I was going out for food or drink, I'd stick to a good old-fashioned English pub, where we can engage in good conversation, for example. Nightclubs are not the place to look for a romantic partner, as many of the women are lacking in personality and decorum, and are generally attention-seeking with a lack of real virtue. Also, don't forget that there's a very real risk of physical harm, even death, from approaching the wrong woman, the wrong lo- drunken lunatic, the wrong bouncer, and so on, on nights out. Also, one can't forget the very real risk of physical harm, even death, from approaching the wrong woman, the wrong drunken lunatic, the wrong bouncer, and so on. In the era of rampant knives and guns, is it really worth losing your life over everything I've just been speaking about? No, not in the remotest sense. Seriously, I got sick of seeing these dudes swaggering around, thinking they're a gift, clearly dragging in dress. Seriously, I got sick of seeing these dudes swaggering around, thinking they're a gift to women, clearly lacking in dress sense and effort, sniffing around. They don't see that it's draining them, not empowering them. It makes them weak. And for anybody who would say that I have no game, or I have approach anxiety, or I need to learn pickup, why should I change who I am as a person, compromise my integrity, and tailor myself to these girls that aren't even worthy of that kind of effort? My closest friends planned a lad's holiday before we were 30, and I had to back my convictions and say to them straight up that I wasn't going, because it would have been predominantly nightclubs followed by misery the next day, perhaps even some sunburn the day after as well, sort of as a bonus. I could have gone and betrayed myself and my principles, but the music was not my scene, and I didn't fancy being surrounded by a bunch of brain-dead, wasted, post-adolescent sloths. I'd rather save the money for our next trip, Vietnam, travelling down the Mekong Delta, seeing the world, The world is such a huge and vibrant place with much to see and do. For example, wildlife, the great outdoors, experience days, and much more. To finish off, let's express this purely in terms of resources, shall we? Let's say you go out every Saturday night for a year, 52 nights, and you stay out on average from 10pm to 4am. Six hours of the night, conservative, and you spend £80. Over the year, that's 312 hours and £4,160. Just think of what you could accomplish with that time and especially the money. You could pay to do a master's degree, invest it in the stock market, pay for a high quality holiday, take yourself on experience days, do personal development courses, learn a language, buy hundreds of brand new books, build a home gym with a barbell and plates, and much more, I think you'll agree. Bringing the topic back to girls and intimacy, the money could be used to pay for a high class escort, cutting out the middleman and getting what you wanted in the first place. Or try to approach women in other places such as a library, a restaurant, bar, or better still, when you're engaging in any of your hobbies or pursuits. So to sum up, avoid nightclubs everyone. They are cancerous, destructive, frustrating, alienating and counterproductive to personal development. As always, I welcome critique and would encourage you to digest my arguments and come to your own conclusions on the topic. Seriously though, save your time, money and mental energy for personal development, take up a new activity or sport and make yourself as successful as you can in other areas. Attention from girls will come by itself and it will be on your terms. Thanks for listening, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.